welcome back to the show. Chinese-American YouTuber and jokester Jai Liang has spent the last two decades of his life in our beautiful country. He joins us today for his first ever television appearance as we get to learn a little bit more than just his comedic side. Jai, welcome to the show. Hi. It's so lovely to have you. You know, it feels uh. like I almost know you after tracking your journey on your YouTube and, of mm. course, finding all the hilarious jokes that you come across, you know, when you're pranking people. <laughs> but before we get into your content, let's find out about you and the person that you are. I mean, you are an American born mm. citizen, yes. but to Chinese parents. Yes. So yes. how did your uh, growing up, I suppose, look and what led you to our country? Um, so basically, I was born in America, in New York, right? And then we were supposed to, according to my parents, we came to South Africa for holiday when I was six. And then they started enrolling me in school and stuff. And I'm like, why do I need to be in school if I'm on holiday? Yeah. <laughs> and then I guess I've just been staying here ever since. So your parents and yourself never actually had a sit down moment where we like, mm -mm. well, this is not a holiday anymore. Mm -mm, never. I just had to go along with it. So I'm still on holiday, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see it. Well, you're doing very, very exceptionally well when it comes to you being on holiday. Yeah. So then can we then see your trip back to America, which essentially kicked off you starting this, this, this YouTube um, mm -hmm. channel. Can we see that as you going back to work then? Actually, I actually went back to America for business to work and also I have family that side still. And then I have a lot of like friends that are South African. So I didn't really have friends in America. Oh, wow. So I was really bored one day and I was like, you know what, let me just go out, film a video to make my friends laugh. And then someone stole it off YouTube and then posted on Facebook and then my best friend, he actually sent it to me and he's like, you're going viral. Wow. And I'm like, yo, I didn't actually expect any of this to go what viral. What did you actually do in that first video that just, you know, struck a chord? Um, so basically I went to Americans and I spoke to them in the South African slang. Uh -huh. And obviously I can't say that on live, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> but essentially, the whole idea and the concept behind your videos is that you take South African everyday slang mm -hmm. and then you get the American citizens to how to engage how with it. So I would go to them and I would tell them something which is very rude mm -hmm. and I would tell them it means something else. And then they would be like, yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> so you basically pulled a Trevor Noah at the Oscars, where he says one thing expects people to believe another. So this essentially is what drove you to having 43 subscribers? 43,000, yes. 43,000. <laughs> but I literally, I literally didn't expect it to blow up this much. Yeah. I just wow. did it for the jokes, to make my friends laugh. And yeah, just, it was all just for the jokes. Well, it seems like that that's what people and South Africans truly do resonate when it comes to you. Mm. We are a nation filled with jokesters and pranksters and laughsters. Yeah. But I want to find out, have you ever got caught out? I actually did once. I got caught by two people. So the ones I was filming with you and it was actually a guy from Joburg. And then he <laughs> choked me. And then I was running around and then he was like, no, I'm joking. He watches my videos and he just got me back. Sure. Yeah. And then the second guy, he was actually from Retreat. And yeah, that didn't really go well. Because <laughs> I was going to say, that's just around the corner, oh, just, yeah, yes, yeah. Well, so you, you know, sometimes you seem like you can't always get away with the most. But mm -hmm. I love the fact that you do push the boundaries and, you know, however people interact with you, that's that. Mm, yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> but now you seem to be back in Cape Town, mm. living your best life as a socialite. Now, how do you think that that contributes to your career? Um, actually, I think... It um, actually helps a lot because I actually want to move back to Cape Town and film content here. So I've been meeting a lot of creators, like meeting a lot of people and then, yeah, we've just been networking ever since and started making content. I like that. Mm. I actually started a new series on YouTube called Reading DMs with um, the Influencers. And then what kind of DMs have you come across? Some really sketchy ones, <laughs> but you're going to have to watch on YouTube too. Check that out. A king, a true <laughs> hustler. This is how they pry you in, and that's how he continues to grow. I'm sure by the end of this, 43,000 subscribers will be nothing, honey. Yeah. Now, I'm very just intrigued by you because not only are you just this comedic person that mm. seems to get along with almost everyone you come into contact with, but you're also all about coming up and helping those that are on the come up. Yes, Tell yes. me about your relationship with Wade and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Who is Wade and Ben and what's the so, buzz around him? So Wade and Ben, he's a, he's a, I think he's a kid from PE. He comes from very humble beginnings and I can see, I filmed one video with him. I spent a day with him and you can see the kid have some, he has some ambition in him, and mm -hmm. I, re I really respect that. Like you don't get, you don't get um, people who have a hard work ethic mindset. They just expect stuff, but you can see Wayden works really hard, and he's come really far with the music, with with his music that he's making, and 
Yeah, he's been he's been collabing with a lot of uh, Cape Town musicians and everything. So I'm really yeah. really proud of him. Yeah. What do you think it is about Wade and Ben besides his hustle and his you know business mind, the kind of person that knocks on every single door mm -hmm. until someone opens? But what what is it about the creatives? Do you think that just makes people love him as well? I don't know. Actually, I think it's just his personality in exactly. general. He's like he's a really he's a really nice guy to be around. Yeah. And he's not shy to do anything like if he's on the show right now, he, he wouldn't be shy about anything. I love that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you do have to put your guard down yes. and be all the way yourself when it comes to just presenting nothing but the best, especially within the corp in the creative realm. Mm. But now during COVID-19, that creative realm was shaken to its core. Mm. A lot of people that were content creators now had to deal with a lockdown and had to create within mm. four walls. So how did COVID-19 and the lockdown affect you? And how are you now emerging in 2021, seeing that COVID is still a thing? Mm, no, it actually affected me a lot because um, ever since I came back in January and lockdown hit like two weeks after I landed. Yeah. So I couldn't actually film any videos because most of my videos are based on like pranks and show so so, so um, experiments and stuff. So I couldn't really film in lockdown. So I've just been inside the house doing nothing for like a whole nine months and yeah. Sometimes do you feel like that can stunt your creativity? It does actually. It, it made me more creative because I had to fi figure out what content to create in the house. But mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely um, struggled. Well, it doesn't seem like you struggled that much because <laughs> now a little baby, mm. your label, you've got some merch, you've got this brand yeah. that you're working on called Send Nudes. Send Nudes. Now, <laughs> South Africa, it is spelt in double O. DS, so please, <laughs> we don't want any Twitter fingers attacking us here. We're all above board. So just tell us a little bit about that merch uh, and your expression of that creativity. So um, basically the, the brand Sen Nudes came obviously because now I'm Asian uh -huh. and Asian people like nudes. So I put Sen Nudes and obviously, you know, the other thing. Well, they saying, like noodles. Noodles, yes, noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how I came up with the brand Sen Nudes because I'm Asian and then noodles and then obviously the play on words with other Sen Nudes. Yeah. And yeah, I also wanted people to like connect with me more so if they wear the brand, and they kind of like represent me more as well. So it's kind of a closer relationship with, uh, with my subscribers and everyone. I love that. That does make so much sense to me. Where do you want to see everything that you're putting your hands on right now reach? The kind of goals that you have for this new year? So I actually wanted to reach over 100,000 subscribers Woo! before the end of the year, but oh, obviously wow. COVID hit and then I couldn't film any content. But we're still pushing, I hopefully hit 100,000 by the end of this year. And yeah, hopefully I'll have my own show one day and stuff. And that's the goal, yeah. I have got no doubt that you are going to do exactly <laughs> that. But there's so many viewers right now that just want to really touch base with you. Mm. And they also might want some encouragement in their creative spaces. Mm. What would you have to say to those people? I would say don't be shy. Do what you have to. If you, if you have a vision, just go for it. Like, don't think about what other people say because there will always be haters or people who will um, have words to put you down. Yeah. And you know if you have haters, you're doing something right because you, if no one's talking, you're not doing anything right. <laughs> Well, on that note, <laughs> thank you so much for touching base with us. Now, whether it's vlogs or fashion or who knows what else in the near future, we wish Jai Liang all the very best from Afternoon, Afternoon Express. But please do stay tuned because we'll be back with Scott and Jai as we play a fun game of a little noodles taste test. But for now, let's head over to the kitchen with Chef Dumi and Scott.